Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this beautiful Sunday worship service, the 24th Sunday after Pentecost. So first off, I'd like to draw your attention to our mission and ministry opportunities. Uh, you'll see them on the various slides we have. Um, obviously, we've got our virtual Sunday worship service with a live stream, and uh, that's every Sunday here with your Zoom link also on uh, YouTube Live and then Facebook later in the day. Dennis posts it for us. Thank you, Dennis. Our in-sanctuary worship service is scheduled to begin November 29th. Uh, we currently have approval. However, we do have a reopening task force meeting this Tuesday um, where we'll be assessing the ongoing COVID conditions and any decisions that were made were that are made regarding the worship service will be communicated to uh, the congregation. Uh, we have some meetings coming up. Our United Methodist Women Finance Committee, uh, like I mentioned, the Reopening Task Force, uh, CCN, and on November 18th, we have our 2020 Charge Conference. And that's gonna be SPRC members, committee chair members, and then the pastor with uh, our DS. Uh, our 2021 pledge campaign continues through November, and we'd like to thank you for your 2020 faithfulness and let you know that any 2021 pledges will be greatly appreciated. Uh, coming up, we have a fantastic four-week four week Advent study. Uh, Pastor is going to be doing Adam Hamilton's Incarnation, and that's going to be rediscovering the significance of Christmas, and that will begin December 1st. So if you're interested, go ahead and shoot Pastor an email or a text or a call, I'm sure, and she will happily uh, get you that information. And then last but not least, uh, the Upper Room, November, December edition is available at the church. Uh, and if you head down to the office, uh, you can receive a free copy from Michelle, or I'm sure she could mail it to you if you, if you requested. All right, so we are going to have our call to worship and opening prayer. So for the call to worship and opening prayer, please join Jamie in the responsive reading, which will be in the bold print on your screen. The prophet asks, can our soul weary bones live again? Oh God, oh God you, you know. know. We ask, can we dance again after mourning, loss and grief? Oh, oh God, God, you know. know. The gift is sure and unmistakable. God's, God's breath poured out as new life for weary souls. Let us celebrate the gift of God's new life and come, come to, to worship, worship God, God in laughter and, and dancing. dancing. Let us pray together. Compassionate, Compassionate God, the wind of your spirit is the very sign of life for all who long for you. One breath from you, and we are rescued from the arid valley of dry bones, given muscles and sinews and joy with which to praise you, and filled with the holy hope you grant to all your faithful children. Let our whole lives be filled with the life breath of the Spirit, that what has lain dormant may burst into bloom, and what looks to us to be death may be revealed as but sleep before the emergence of new life. Amen.
Please join me in the offertory prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you that you have plans for me and that you are for my good and for your glory. You said, give and it will be given to you, for in the same measure as you give, it will be given to you again. We give to you today as a response to your goodness to us. We ask that you receive our offerings and our talents and that you continue to supply all of our needs. May your peace be in our hearts. May your grace be in our words. May your love be in our hands and may your joy be in our souls. In your mighty name we pray, amen. Good morning, all. It is so good to see you all. It's a wonderful, beautiful Sunday morning. Always such a big joy to see all of you at this time on Sunday. So uh, good morning, Julius. Would you uh, lead this time for joys and concerns? Sure. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining uh, today. This is a time that we express our joys and concerns. So if you have a joy and concern, just kind of wave your hand and I'll ask you to unmute your mic so uh, we can have an orderly choice of concern so anyone have a joy and concern hi Shirley go ahead um sadly I have to report that my cousin Pat who had the brain tumor passed a couple of weeks ago she didn't pass from the tumor but from the treatment for the tumor mm -hmm. but so Where just Prayers for um, strength for her daughter who's taking care of everything. And what's her daughter's name? Nicole. Nicole. And where do they live? Where did Pat live? Southern California. Southern California. Okay. Where I'm from. The Waltons. Yeah, go ahead. I, um, I'm asking prayers for Jerry's brother and family who just lost a mother and wife to COVID-19. And what was the mom's name? Virginia. Virginia. Prayers to the Walton family for that. That's unfortunate. And where was Virginia? Where did she live? Uh, South Dakota. South Dakota, wow. Any other joys and concerns? Well, it's good to see everyone uh, today. Uh, Pastor, I'll pass it back to you. Okay, thank you. Let us, uh, you have something? Okay, uh, Becca has something to share. I just wanted to thank you all. I have a joy and concern. There we go. I wanted to thank you all for your continued prayers for James um, in finding a job. So the great news is he has found a job, he finally got an offer, so yay. Uh, the concern side of it is it's in Nevada, so he'll start in December and be commuting back and forth on his days off to come visit Jamie and I. And uh, Jamie and I will finish out the school year here and then we will move uh, with him. And then the other concern is Jamie's having surgery again on December 18th to remove screws from his knee and clean up some scar tissue, so prayers would be greatly appreciated on that front. 
it's like our annual uh, family event. So anyhow, thank you all. So joy for James' new job, and uh, it's uh, sad that they have to move um, next year. And also we will pray for Jamie surgery. Let's come together in the spirit of prayer and take a deep breath. Breathe in, breath of God, and breathe out. Heal us, Lord. Two more. Breathe in, breath of God, breathe out. Heal us, O oh Lord. Breathe in the breath of God. Breathe out. Heal us, O oh Lord. I'd like to invite you to pray for all those who are whose names are written on <clears throat> the slide. We have three slides for uh, our prayers. Let us uh, pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O oh Lord, we lift up Felderman family for the joy of a new job. We lift up James, <clears throat> his new job, and for the family. And we also pray that uh, the transition time will be safely uh, passing with your grace. And we lift up the family of Shirley's cousin, Pat, and also Walton families, Virginia. Lord, have them in your comfort, in your peace. Help them to find your support in this difficult time. We lift up our brothers and sisters for your healing grace. Please give a successful surgery for Jamie in December. Walk with him, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need your healing and your grace. We need our hope restored. Hope for our family members, church members, friends and neighbors, and for our nation. Help us to remember that your work on behalf of your children constantly and powerfully and completely you work oh god thank you and thank you that you are able to do far more than we could ever imagine so we reach out to you believing that you are restoring and redeeming every place of difficulty, all the battles we have faced for your greater glory. 
in trust. We give this prayer to you, and with confidence as your children, we pray all of this and lift up the prayer you have taught us to pray. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hey, good morning. We are living in some unusual times, and it's giving us new opportunities to use the talents that God has given to each of us and to let our light shine. That's what I want to sing about today. I have a light that shines in me. Scripture reading today is from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. 
But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, Throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of God for this day. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jamie. That was a low awesome gorgeous voice that you shared with us wow and thank you dennis you did something special with the what's going on you know with the words and jamie and he tried a new thing see our uh sermon title blessed are those who try try new things each sunday that's dennis <laughs> He just uh, talked about that this morning, and I thought, well, well, he will do it next Sunday, but he did it anyway. So, <laughs> blessed are you, Dennis. Well, like um, I, I shared last Sunday, uh, we have a puppy, a uh, Deshan boy, nine week old. Um, please pray for him. He, he's sick right now, so. Um, yeah, but uh, he's such a um, cutest dog, <laughs> cutest in the world, <laughs> and also very smart. I, th I never knew that a puppy can come almost tra potty trained, okay, almost. <laughs> so he's almost perfect with uh, his liquid part, but <laughs> it's not there yet with his solid part. It's so amazing. I mean, he w he's sleeping on one place and then he wakes up and then walk all the way to the pad and will do, will do his business and then go back to his bed. I was like, what kind of puppy <laughs> is doing that? Uh, so, well, still work to be done, um, and potty train is never easy, right? So, in theory, potty training works this way. You have to earn the respect from your dog as a pack leader of the house. Then, um, after a while, he will listen to you. But you cannot be the pack leader by just being the scariest person in the house, right? 
you have to be always patient and firm and consistent with your dog. At the same time, you need to build up loving relationship with your dog enough so that he can trust and listen to you. Well, it is always uh, easier said than actually done. So lucky, I mean, uh, prayers for my family. <laughs> In today's parable of uh, talents, the third worker who is given with one talent did not have a much trust or respect toward his master. He was actually filled with fear, fear of his master. So what did he do? Nothing. He didn't do anything with his talent. He said, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. It's not even my talent, right? Your talent <laughs> in the ground. So this is an awful image of the master this worker had. No wonder why he chose the safest path for him, burying all his treasures under the ground. For him, the master was a harsh judge, a condemning authority, a God who seems to say, if you make a mistake, you will be banished forever. Thankfully, our God is not like that. He is forgiving, generous, patient, and loving God who has given each and every one of us appropriate, appropriate talents according to our each own uh, ability. And thankfully, there were two more workers who understood God differently. They had some res respect and trust in their master. So they utilize, utilized all their given talents. They were not afraid to use them all. As a result, they multiplied their resources for the world to come. Today, our world is very sick in so many levels, so many places. Our world needs people who would try. Something good for the healing of all people, all the creatures on this earth, with whatever they have. They would not just bury their time, talent, and treasure under the ground. The parable of talents tell us today, when people have faith in God, they would more likely willing to offer their talents for other people. Without faith, without trust in God, people will not invest their time, talent, and treasure for other people, for the world. But certainly there are risks, as you know. You may lose what you have. The world is not a safe place. It is not immune to disasters. What if you fail? Did the two wor workers with five and two talents have any fear of losing their investments? Maybe they did. They were also humans. 
But the oddest thing about this parable is that they didn't show, they did not show any fear, or they used their talents in spite of fear. And that they both had brought back exactly double amount of talents at the end. The one with five talents brought back five more talents, and the one with two talents came back with two more talents. How could they do it? How could both of them come back with exactly double amounts of talents? That, that is very odd thing in this parable. Obviously, this parable is not a financial report or a business report. A parable is a, a means to convey a message. So what, what is it uh, that Jesus is trying to convey, the message? I think their perfect performance is not about their ability or the actual profit numbers of their work. I'm, I've been thinking that it, it should be more about what it means to the master. To the master, they're saying, yes, yes, I trust you, I believe you, I'm going to use these talents no matter what. Their yeses must have been enough for the master to say, great job, I will give you perfect score. At least they did not give up. At least they tried. At least they opened their hearts and minds to the, to the invitation of God. At least they trusted God and opened up their treasure box and used them for the betterment of others. At least they listened to the words of God and put them in their actions. At least they chose to become doers, not just talkers or hearers. As a result, a lot of positive spirit of the world was created. As a result, more people were engaged in the businesses of new creation in more corners of this world. Imagine where all those resources, talents were being used and distributed and what they were doing. And that was what the master wanted to see. The kingdom of God would be built up, built up by all those who are willing to try. I'd like to commend all of you for trying something new this year, trying to participate in online worship service. Could have been a challenge, but you did it anyway. Trying to do, uh, convey a Zoom meeting could have been a very big challenge to some of you, but you did it anyway. Or just trying to participate in small group Bible study. That could have been a challenge to you, but you did it anyway. So I want to thank you for not giving up and continuing your efforts to do something with your time, talents, and treasures for the goodness of this world. 
I will say this, none of our work would never be perfect. But all of our efforts would be always perfect to the eyes of our God. Amen? Well, as you know, I'm not so techy person. Uh, maybe I'm, I think I'm a little below of average in terms of knowing what's going on with computer. <laughs> maybe lower, lower. <laughs> yep. And phones, all kinds of apps. I'm afraid to upload any apps on my phone, so I don't do it. So sometimes I just give up. Um, and so I would make my own limits and boundaries and stay there for the sake of uh, sanity of my soul. But one day I pushed uh, that boundary um, and experienced something extraordinary. Um, there is one thing that I, I've been avoiding so far that is uh, called uh, iCloud. Many of you have, <laughs> but I, I don't have it yet. Uh, but it is a storage up in cloud somewhere. <laughs> And it's kind of, um, I think, uh, expensive to me. So I thought that I don't need, I do not need any storage up there in the cloud. Uh, two weeks ago, for the interfaith election healing uh, prayer service, I had to send a video to the executive director of the interfaith uh, coalition of Contra Costa County. So I sent it to him three times, but still he said, I, I didn't get it. So I was so frustrated. Then he asked me to send it uh, to his iCloud account. So I thought I could just send it, right? But my computer insisted that I had to install iCloud account. But this time it was free. So, so I did it. Uh, there was no more time to waste. Uh, it was Saturday and I had to do it. Uh, so I clicked the button to install iCloud on my computer. And then it worked fine, so I could send it to the director, finally. But <laughs> when I was going to do some work uh, on my computer later uh, for my church work, ministry, I was so shocked to discover that the whole files of uh, Brentwood Community U UMC, the whole files were gone from my computer. I could not find them anywhere. So I panicked. I panicked so much. Um, so I called my husband. I, I, I said, my computer got so crazy now. iCloud made everything messed up, and I lost all my files. I don't know what to do. It is Saturday. <laughs> I had no idea, and I was so afraid. Um, and he tried to help me, but uh, no use. So I felt so angry, frustrated, and hopeless. I kept saying I should, I knew this would happen. iCloud would destroy <laughs> my computer, <laughs> at least my files and everything. Uh, so let me tell you what was going on with my husband's uh, day, uh, that Saturday. Uh, he recorded his Sunday worship service uh, that was All, All Saints Sunday, 
uh, and they always make a recording of worship Saturday morning. Uh, because it was All Saints Sunday, there were like um, so many more people who participated in Zoom. So he was recording everything. It took more than uh, one and a half hour. Uh, and it, it also they had the Holy Communion and everything. So after that, he began to upload it uh, to save it for Sunday morning. And it is usually done automatically without any problem. Uh, but that day, uh, it would not go further after 99%, 99% of uploading. So he thought maybe the internet was slow. But after lunch, he checked and it was still stuck at 99%. So he had to stop it to try it for the second time. Then boom, boom, the, the recording was gone. <laughs> it's gone and he could not find it anywhere. So I got panicked for him, but he was like so calm. <laughs> Maybe he was insane inside. But anyway, I mean, it was just so black or white. <laughs> and but he, was, he had to either call 20 more people to do it more again, the whole thing over again uh, that evening or what. So uh, maybe he kept praying inside. And it was uh, that afternoon, same afternoon, when my disastrous computer iCloud uh, episode happened. And uh, he, he came and he's still not looking panicked. Uh, he encouraged me to look into every file on the screen, one by one, okay? So we did it. There were so many new folder names I have never seen before. I really hated iCloud. <laughs> oh, I, I'm still so upset. <laughs> then I opened, um, one folder with a new name. I had no idea what's in there. I opened it and voila, there they were. All my BC UMC files were there. Yay! <laughs> but I was so shocked. What, what happened? What happened? Oh my Lord, I just so, I got so relieved. And then a strange thing happened. I, I'm hearing some people laughing because of my ignorance or whatever, but it's okay, that's what happened. <laughs> okay, so a strange thing happened. My husband noticed something on my computer. He saw a folder named Zoom on my screen. Obviously, I never created such a folder, right? And who created it? I think iCloud did. <laughs> so my, my husband, um, he had never seen uh, a folder with that name on his computer either. <laughs> so <laughs> with curiosity, he looked at his computer and, and there was a Zoom folder. So he opened it and there were all the Sunday worship recordings there. Thank God. So what a day. I mean, it was just roller coaster one thing after another. Uh, so he didn't have to do everything all over again. I, so I, I learned that iCloud was not that bad after all. <laughs> so um, 
<laughs> Actually, it helped my uh, ministry and <laughs> it saved my husband's day and ultimately his church's Sunday worship service. Jesus would like that too. Mercy, mercy. So brothers and sisters, would you please be more open to God's invitation? Amen? Yeah, there are unlimited numbers of opportunities and resources out there. And according to our ability, uh, we can use them. We can use them. God loves and bless all those who try, try, just click the button <laughs> and participate in new things. Try to do something uh, with your time and talent and treasure. What matters is not what we have, actually. What matters is what we are willing to do with what we have. So let us remember that Jesus did not like buried treasure. He never walked on the safe side of the street, as you know. So we who follow him must not be in the barrier business, but in the resurrection business. Resurrection is possible in God's limitless storage. So let us move out with what we have and what we are to further the kingdom of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are those who try. Oh God, Jesus is saying to us, Help us to open our eyes, hearts, and minds, Lord. Help us to try something, something good, something new, in spite of our fear, Lord. And you promise that you will take this journey with us. And it is the right time, this very time, it is the time for us to try something new, oh God. Help us. Help us with our um, brave hearts and trusting mind. In your son's name we pray. Amen. We will sing an Easter song, He Lives, United Methodist hymnal number 310, He Lives, with Olivia. Thank you. 
and peace and love, knowing that the love of God our Father and the grace of our Jesus Christ and the presence and the communion, the love of the Holy Spirit will be with us forever. Amen. Oh, okay, let's uh, pass our peace in sign language. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Amen. Mm -hmm. 